Okay. Um, you know, lots been going on, man, which is why I haven't really been commenting, you know. Um, I mean, there's, again, a lot of stuff lap happening in the world, but not necessarily in hip-hop, even though I guess it's connected. And, you know, artists ain't really saying nothing, so um, rightfully so, I think. Um, it's not like people are releasing new music and any of it being any good. Um, so let me run down a couple of things that have been on my mind. Um, I saw something... And I'm assuming that it's real, but it was like Freddie Gibbs was making fun of LL Cool J's Black Lives Matter freestyle. You know, I've spoken on Gibbs before. Um, stuff like that just makes me go like, stop cooling, my nigga. You know what I'm saying? Like, honestly, you know, like, eh, I, I look and I've I've said this about Freddie Gibbs, about him being a trash rapper, which he is. Um, yeah, I even listened to some of that Alfredo trash. But, uh, you know, it's, it's white boy music. It's not for anybody that really listens to hip-hop like that. And um, here he is going at a legend like LL and saying this, the bars in that freestyle were whack, which is weird as fuck to me because they were actually kind of nice. Um, I was, in fact, listening to it going like, damn, I wish LL had rapped on this, like, on a beat and actually put it together in a song, you know? But, you know, Freddie Gibbs is clout chasing and... Um, for him to clown LL, especially for some freestyle, if it is indeed true that those are his tweets and it's not just some made-up shit for the internet, um, yeah, I mean, I didn't have respect for the dude, but now I'm, like, actively, like, man, fuck this nigga, man, clown-ass nigga, but these are the kind of dudes that, you know, white people put on a pedestal, like, nerd white people, you know what I'm saying, and say, oh, he's a great rapper, you should listen to him, <laughs> fuck out of here, anyway, to keep it moving, um, this post is going to offend you guys. I'm sure some of you um, who listen, unfortunately, it is what it is. I didn't make up racism. I wish it didn't exist. Uh, white people created this shit, and it is what it is. So we have to deal with it. And this is where we are in 2020, okay? This Mass Appeal shit, I don't know if you have caught wind of this, but apparently Mass Appeal, like a lot of uh, companies, are now like, we stand with Black Lives Matter. You know, everyone's putting out these comments, right? Like, they have these, like, bullets in. And it's, and it's weird because it's like a marketing tactic. I just skip these fucking emails now. You know, like, I'll get emails from places that I haven't been to in years or whatever, being like, we stand in solidarity with black folk. Like, okay, you know, uh, thanks for telling me that, but I don't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? Like... You know, your words don't mean shit to me at this stage. Like, if you are doing something, if you're like, look, we just, you know, we just donated like, you know, $100,000 to emergency fund for protesters or some shit. Then I'm like, oh, okay. But for you to just be like, we stand like some corporate statement. Get the fuck out of here, man. Come on. So anyways, Mass Appeal, like a lot of these places have put out their little statement. And of course, because they're in the age of social media, their former employees are starting to get at them. Something hard excuse me, <laughs> which I thought was funny and really, really sad to watch. And essentially, a lot of the former black employees were saying how mass appeal is some whitewash bullshit, and at the end of the day, they don't even respect their black employees. Think about how crazy this is, okay? This is why... This is why, at the end of the day... You can't really respect where white people are coming from, especially when it comes to hip-hop. I've said this before. I don't give a fuck about your opinion if you're a white dude when it comes to hip-hop. I Like I said, and this applies to 98% of white people, you know, period. Again, there are some white people that know hip-hop, but they're in the vast minority. So the vast word shouldn't even be used, but they're a very, very, very tiny amount. Most of them don't know what the fuck you're talking about, and most of them are here for the check, Okay. They're just here to profit off the culture. It's some weird or racist shit. So imagine being the head of a hip-hop label or dealing with urban culture, quote-unquote, and all your employees are white, you barely hire black people, and then when you have black employees, you treat them like shit. And you would be surprised at how often this happens. Now, I'm not going to say that I know exactly what's going on in Mass Appeal personally, these some of these black employees could be talking shit they may have their personal issues and they're trying to use what's going on right now as a come up that is a possibility but from what i know and from what i've experienced in life what they're saying in terms of how these white execs and stuff are treating them and what's going on in that company that rings more true to me because i've seen the shit okay like this is a problem with having white gatekeepers in hip-hop 
And this is a major reason why this genre has gone on fucking toilet. And why, to a certain degree, I don't even comment on stuff as much as I would normally. Because I'm like, why would I comment on the new Gunna track? It's trash. Okay, I've listened to stuff. I'm up on stuff. But I'm like sitting there going like, am I just going to make videos about stuff being trash over and over again? Like new shit? Why? Like, I know who these artists are made for. They're not made for me. Like, you know what I'm saying? They're not even made for black people a lot of times. They're made for some corny white dude, video, you know, plays video games somewhere and has no access to the culture. Because the truth of the matter is that most white people want to, uh, they want to experience hip hop from a safe distance. And a safe distance means a non-black distance. That's the truth of the matter. You can slice it however you want. But the fact of the matter is that most of them do not give a fuck about black people like that. We've seen this time and time again. I don't even get mad about it like that. It is what it is. And I just try to like wrap my head and and move in a certain way that's smart. Again, I know that there are some white people that are down for the cause. And I know that there are some white people who are cool. But they are in the minority. A lot of them do not give a fuck about your existence. And a fair amount of them want you wiped off the planet. That's just the facts. Okay, they either want you in chains, in some sort of chains, or they're gone, or just something they don't have to think about, or they just don't give a fuck. Like, oh, I'm here suffering, they don't give a fuck. Okay, that's the majority of white folk. Let's be honest here. So, when I see a comment from someone who's probably white talking about, oh, you know, don't you tell you don't know what you're talking about, blah blah, and they make some comment, you know, what I'm saying they're trying to insult me, that's white privilege trying to exert itself on hip-hop as always it's that idea that you can just enter hip-hop you can start listening and within a couple of months you're some sort of authority on hip-hop and you can even co- you can even look down on black people and say oh you don't know what you're talking about <laughs> even though you didn't grow up in this culture you know what i'm saying you're not black you're you're observing from a safe distance and you feel totally entitled to consider people beneath you but that's the problem with these white gay peepers, right? They are fucking up the genre. And a lot of them don't care about the genre. It's a check. They get someone like a Nas or whatever who is the face of the culture who they can say, yeah, 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 we and get some clout. But at the end of the day, it's just, it's just you know, they just want to hang around rap stars or whatever. You know what I'm saying? And oh, make a little money, of course, on, on top of that. But they don't give a fuck about the culture and where it really comes from. And that's the problem. Listen, man. I had this experience with Peter Rosenberg at one point. I've met Peter Rosenberg, by the way. Um, I have no real issue with Peter Rosenberg, like, in a way, because he, he didn't diss me or anything like that. It wasn't like that. But I'll tell you a story. I was in New York. This was, like, last year, I think. This was um, Clark Kent and um, it was the original. So it was, like, some kind of um, DJ party. They were doing a free show, I think, of Central Park. So this was, like, summertime towards the end of summer and you know i go because it's a free show and uh you know it's a big deal or whatever and it's fun it's like summer you know summer series i go clark kent's on stage stretch armstrong and someone else tony uh i think it was um tony touch i might might be wrong but i think it was tony touch anyway they're spinning and they're spinning joints okay these dudes is playing joints. So I'm like in heaven and shit. You know what I'm saying? I remember I was arrived. They were playing Made You Look. And again, it's like, you can imagine there was got to be at least a thousand people there. You know what I'm saying? And like free shows, Central Park, summertime, beautiful. And they're spinning. It was like nighttime. They had really nice lights and everything. It was fucking great. I arrived. They're playing Made You Look. I'm like, oh, this is my shit. I'm here. Okay. So I'm walking around, blah, blah. And I settle at a spot where I can kind of freely, you know, you know, I'm a hip hop dude, man. I want to free, be able to move and rock a little bit. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to be break dancing on the floor and shit like that. But, but you know, this is hip hop. It's supposed to, you know, make you move a little bit. I get there and I'm standing and there's this white dude like next to me. And I look over. It's Peter Rosenberg. <laughs> I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> so I say, hey, what up, man? And, yo, <laughs> he's like, uh, and there's when he looked at me where it was just kind of like, Hmm. You know, like sometimes, like as a black person, there's certain looks you get sometimes from people. And again, I'm six four, so a lot of y'all who are talking that you're gonna come meet me, and you know you're gonna fight me. All right, you know, <laughs> cool. We'll see how we'll see how that works out. But anyway, so I'm six four, and I'm looking at Peter Rosenberg, who's not six four, 
And um, I don't know if he felt sort of like, kind of like, you know, who's this dude? And, you know, because you never know. Sometimes people can approach you side, sideways or whatever. And I wasn't even trying to do that. I was really on some just like, hey, Peter, you know, Speedy Rosenberg, hey, how you doing? And uh, he was like, oh, okay. And then he continued, you know, sort of talking to, you know, his white friend. Now, I'm not even mad or anything like that. Like I said, he didn't do anything that would make me feel like I wasn't welcome or some shit like that, right? I mean, it was a, you know, it, it wasn't the most comfortable inviting, you know, sort of like, um, you know, smile or whatever. But again, like, you know, he's Peter Rosenberg, I'm nobody. So, and he, who knows, he might have a long day and all that kind of shit. He might not know where I'm coming from, all that. That's cool. What struck me about the whole interaction was that you know, Clark Kent and them are playing joints, okay? And Clark Kent, I think he's from Brooklyn, if I remember. But they're playing J joints, Brooklyn's finest, you know. Ain't none of y'all better, right? Like, some, just some hip-hop-ass shit. Crowd is going nuts, and we're having a great time. We're rocking. And I'm looking at Peter Rosenberg and his white buddy, who, again, doesn't look like he's part of the culture. And they're just talking the entire time. Like, just a bit of blah, blah. and they have a beer in their hand, not moving, not acknowledging any of the songs. And I was just like, I don't, I don't know how that happens. You know what I'm saying? Like, when I'm out with people, again, even with Rock the Bells, when I go with one of my good, you know, closest friends, white dude, we love this hip hop shit. If we're out and someone's playing a record, we might even be talking, and someone's playing a joint, be like, oh, that's my shit, right? So for this dude. The entire time I was there for like an hour, two hours, this dude was not into the music, was just kind of like, you know, standing there with his boy, not even paying attention. It made me realize that like, maybe this nigga doesn't like hip hop as much as he says he does. Because I just don't see a situation where these classics are being played. And some of them are like, not even like stuff you hear on the radio all the time, but like real genuine dope ass hip hop records. And you're just like, the whole time again maybe he had a long day maybe he was at a show originally and he's tired i i don't know i mean the radio life is not an easy life so i am kind of reading into this but my point is that these if it is what i think it is these are exactly the type of white gatekeepers that are a fucking problem okay they don't care about the culture they don't even feel the shit no wonder he's such a kendrick lamar stan no wonder. These are the kind of people that love Kendrick Lamar. They like garbage. I don't, we don't listen to that shit. And don't pump up that garbage that's kind of like, you know, comfortable for white folks. Oh, yeah, he's talking about race, but not in any way that's like tangible and real. Like in a way that's very easy and accessible so that I don't have to think about the shit like that. So, yeah, you can put Kendrick Lamar on a pedestal, but at the end of the day, niggas don't listen to Kendrick Lamar like that. You know what I'm saying? And that's the problem with these white gatekeepers. They water down the fucking culture hard on top of being racist and this is the shit we have to deal with man it's really unfortunate but anyway i hope y'all staying safe and if y'all out here rioting and shit like that and you know doing what you do you know my heart goes out to you man because this shit has got to stop it's a problem big big problem